kindly ask the question like kindly ask the question again so that it will be part of the recording all right hello barista hello i'm here please ask. Liz, the question i'm asking is that if a developing country okay is going through economic recession or great depression okay and a developed country is going through the same economic or great depression which okay. of these two countries suffers most thank okay. you Okay, thank you very much. I hope we all heard him. <laughs> so he's asking if, um, as a developed country, so let's use real life example. An example of a developed country is USA. Okay, yes. So uh, we have Ghana, who is a developing country. And let's say, for instance, the prices of I posted some, who has my number? I posted something on my status, was it two days ago, about the inflation rates in USA, which yeah, was around so nine, <laughs> around 9.1. 9, 9. 9. 9. 9.1, yeah. <laughs> and Ghana's inflation rate was around 29.8. Okay, so in a circumstance where you have a developed country, a developed country who is ha having a, a little bit of recession, it's, it's not a depression. Ghana, we, the country, no country is facing depression now. We are all facing what you call oh. recession. Okay. We cannot survive Hello. depression. Yes. So, so, sorry, let me ask. Uh, what about uh, Ukraine, Russia? Uh, Ukraine, Russia. <laughs> okay. They are, they are facing the war, but the war has not led to a depression. Maybe after the war, there can be a depression. All right. All right. Yes. So let's say Ghana. For instance, we have no country is facing, um, let's say, depression now. We are all facing what you call recession because of the COVID and let's say Ukraine war. Our prices keep going up. But when we get to a point where our inflation rates are 100% or even 120%, we get to a point that people are not even going to school. You have over 100, over hundreds, or let's say about 1,000 students who are, who are deferring their course because they can't afford a fees. Now you have parents who are being laid off. When let's say when the when things get worse, you understand what I mean when things get worse. That's what we mean by great I mean by depression. But from your question, you ask, you want to compare a developed country to a developing country. It's like you're asking me <laughs> a rich man who doesn't have money and a poor man who doesn't have money. Okay, so a rich man who doesn't have money at least has up to certain living standard. A rich man who doesn't have money may have his own house. A rich man who doesn't have money may have one or two things that he can even survive on, even though he may not have money at that time. Or he may even have people who can help him. But you as a poor man, you don't have money. You are even renting somebody's or I didn't say you are renting, yeah, you're a poor man, but I'm trying to say that, let's say you don't have money at all. And you don't even have a home and you are being sacked. So how are you going to, or, or where will you be? Of course, your situation will be worse than somebody who has all these things. So a developed country may have a greater advantage or survival rate than a developing country. Even though Ghana experienced COVID, let me give you a real life example. USA experienced COVID, even the Western world was worse, but they were sending us money. How many of you heard that? Yes. They were, and the money, it was even misused. They were using the money to cook um, to Jimmy, the rice, to Jimmy rice, yes. <laughs> for people to eat. So you can imagine, if you go to Italy, almost, I was checking the rates. One of my mothers wanted to travel outside to Belgium. So we were checking when they're going to even open the airport and when they were, we were going to put things into place. And like every day, people keep dying. At least one day, you have about 1,000 people. Just imagine, 1,000 people dying in a particular country. But yet, these people were sending us money so that we can get drugs. We can supply some drugs to people. We can even buy food for our people. You get it? So it should give you a clear di distinction between Ghana and the other people. <laughs> so things may get worse. But a rich man can survive better than a poor man. So Ghana is a poor country. Okay, so like I told you about the macroeconomic model, there is this man Keynes. 
believe government should intervene. At first, microeconomics, you heard about something called the invisible hand. How many of you know that? Or how many of you heard it? Yes, we've heard about it in yes, microeconomics. Yes, yeah. because something an invisible hand. The invisible hand said that the economy correct itself. But like I told you earlier in the first session, that Keynes came in. This man is the originator of microeconomics. We're like, no, 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 no. Government should intervene. We shouldn't wait till price gets so high, things get worse. You government come in there. Government, please come in, come and correct interest rates. Come and correct inflation rates. Come and look at employment and how we can make employment or employ more people. So even though there may not be jobs available, government, we beg you, either employ people to dig holes and just pay them. Imagine you are digging holes. It's not a productive work, but you are digging holes and government will pay you. So you dig holes, government pays you, dig holes. It's great to attempt that the economy revive. The economy works revived okay so let's move forward <laughs> so I, I i mentioned this three goals already that when we say an economy is a developed country these are the three main variables that we look at those ones have highlighted that uh, if you go to america you want to see america is developed it means they achieve Because they've achieved economic growth, they've achieved stable prices, and they've achieved low unemployment. Okay. Okay. So somebody is asking me a question, my dear. <laughs> See, you don't have to rush. If I rush through the topic, like how lecturers rush, that's why this is tutorial. So when you come here, I want you to understand everything very well so that when you have some objective questions, you'll be, you'll be okay. So this is what they're talking about economic growth here. Okay, they wanted to ask, um, so that if, if, let me look at it. So they're talking about life expectancy. I'm sure you'll be doing that under unemployment. So we were talking about, at first, between 1990, when somebody falls sick, you don't know the kind of drug or the prescribed drug you can give to the person. But right now, because of economic growth, we have doctors, we have everything. So the main variables of any economic growth is that one, life expectancy is what is very high. Okay, there's an increased production of services. There's an increased production and everything. Okay, so let's look at Ghana's GDP. I'm sure I'll, I'll get a link that will give you the GDP. So in current prices, what do we mean? In current prices, what do we mean? It means in nominal terms. Okay, I'm going to explain later. Hey, can we say nominal and in real terms? So, this is a rate of GDP. If you see that the country GDP has been growing, it has been growing massively. Okay, please, any question? Okay, so all these things explain what you mean by economic growth. Anytime there's economic growth, the people tend to benefit from it. Um, people get jobs to do. Okay. So they're asking us, what makes real GDP grow? Okay. Why, why is it that it grows faster in some period? Ghana, our GDP may grow in this year, or let's say, I don't know how things may change in the last, in the next five months left. But our GDP can grow, but sometimes it may not grow as it used to, or how it grew last year. Okay, and if it's, or it's not growing, what can the finance minister do, or what can the government do? What are some things? So this year they implement to call an e levy tax. Anytime there's an there's a tax, how does it affect GDP? Okay, yes, yeah, somebody has raised a hand. Ima. Yeah, I want to ask you this question. Okay. Uh, when maybe when the GDP is growing, does it mean that the economy is doing well? Okay, that, that's a measure of um let's say GDP, but they are criticism. You see, some some people believe that when the GDP is growing, 
people believe that yeah the economy is growing but let's say in the economy we have like two people in the okay let me say they go here even on your block you can have like two people who may have money more than the others so if you want to calculate gdp or look at the standard of living based on gdp of course that may be a standard but it's not the best so a country may use mostly that's a normal thing but it's not the best we use GDP as a measure of economic growth. It is part of it. But frankly speaking, it will not be the best. Because if you go to come to Ghana here, most of the industries are in how many regions? There are like three regions. Accra here, Kumasi, and then the Western region, Takrade. These are where you find most of the industries. But if you come go to other regions, you don't really find industries. So if you're going to analyze that, okay, Ghana's GDP is at this rate because they're able to produce at this rate. If you go to the Upper East or Upper West, they may not have that, those, they, or they may not be producing what you're producing in Accra, Kumasi, and Takrade. You get it. So GDP is a good measure of economic growth, but there are criticisms. Please, any questions? Somebody raise their hand. Uh, hello, Barista. Hello. Yes. Uh, please. So can inflation affects GDP. Inflation. Yes, please. <laughs> can, can it affect the growth of GDP? Yes. So we are saying that one measure of economic growth is that, or one measure of, um, of a good economy are stable prices. So if the prices of goods are very high, of course, people may not tend to be able to afford or they cannot buy as much as they, they want to. Okay, so if government, sometimes if government wants to increase GDP, he may try to increase prices or yes, cause a little bit of inflation. But when inflation becomes worse, as, it's, as we are seeing now, like in Ghana here, it doesn't affect GDP or it doesn't improve upon GDP. But one way of government improving GDP is to increase prices a little bit. So you could see that it got uh, within, if not for this thing we are experiencing, every three months you could see that government says may to petrol more. I'm increasing the price of what petrol. I'm increasing the price of what cocoa. It is a way of increasing the GDP. But when it becomes wet, you could see that the people who will be contributing to the growth of the GDP may not get the money or may not get the GDP, may not get money to even buy goods and services. We that will tend to improve GDP. Is that okay? So inflation may be a factor, but then when it gets worse, it doesn't contribute to the growth of GDP. Please, any other question? Somebody raise their hand. So if you see it everywhere, yes, it's true. Inflation affects GDP. It causes GDP to go. But when it gets worse, no. Please, any other question? No, please. So we are all okay. Okay. So here we are going to talk about unemployment and employment. So when we say somebody is unemployed, what, are we, what do we mean? When we say somebody is employed, what do we mean? How do we measure a country's standard of living using employment and unemployment rates? I already told you that when we come to Ghana here, we assume that a lot of people are working. So they said the unemployment rate in Ghana is very low. And I don't understand why they say that. Maybe they look at a particular type. So under this, we are going to have what you call types of unemployment. Those who did economics in SHS, I'm sure you're familiar with some of them. You have what you call the structural unemployment, the fictional unemployment. The, I have mentioned them seasonal unemployment and all of that cyclical. your good cyclical unemployment so all these are types of what unemployment that you can't hear Pesla. you see when you are joining the meeting you join with audio okay you join with audio okay is, is it only a who can't hear me or more than one person. She's the only person who can't hear me. 
Please so kindly log out and then log in again. Okay. Okay. So the situation where we have a lot of people unemployed. You know, when you work, you pay what to call an income tax. Are you aware? Anytime you work, when you start working, you pay what to call, yes, income tax. The income tax comes from the tax of your income. So the amount you your father receives at the end of the month is called a disposable income. A disposable income. Now this disposable income is being deducted or is given to you after the income tax has been taken. So let's say you are being given 5,000, you are paying 5,000, but, but you go to your account, you are still only 4,000 Ghana cities. Now, what it means is that your the, a tax has been deducted, which is what, 1,000 Ghana cities. So the 4,000 now becomes what you call your disposable income. Okay, so in a situation where we have an economy with a lot of low employment or low employment rates, it tends to affect the GDP because the more people work, the more they can buy goods and services, they may, the more they will be able to do a lot of things. So let's keep moving. So I want you to go and look at unemployment rates in Ghana now and other stops. So that was what I explained. Real GDP and employment are closely related. How? So the more people work, of course, the more they can buy goods and services, that will tend to what, increase GDP. But you have a lot of people who are staying in the house, who are not working. You should expect that the GDP will not grow as you want. Okay. So firms produce more. They're able to hire more workers. Firms produce less. They lay off workers and all that stuff. So when you have a lot of employment rate, of course, the firms are going to employ more people. And like I said, the more you employ people, the more the people can afford the goods and services themselves, and the more they can do things on their own. Okay. So how many of you have seen this diagram in the, in the book, in the slide? Do you all have this particular slide? No, please. You don't have it? Yes. yes. So let me so I have to send it to you, eh? Yes. yes, yes. Okay, sure. I'll send it. I'll send it to the, my page. So we have an expansion, contraction, and expansion. So have you seen it? Look at this part. This part is can be used to explain what we call the recession period. It gets to a time that the economy will expand. When does the economy expand? When the government injects money into the economy, they will build schools. They are providing free services. They are helping people. Right now, the economy is contracting. Okay, it is contracting, and the economy may expand. So this is what we call the business cycle. Having to seen it, so you haven't seen this book in this diagram in any of your books. No. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. Sure. So I'll, then I will send it to you. I will send this particular slide to you. But are you following what you're doing? Yes. Okay. So somebody, at the beginning of this lecture, somebody asked me about an expansion and contraction and all that. So an expansion, I told you, an increase, a period of increasing real GDP. So we are, we are having, the government is injecting money into the economy. The economy is growing. Okay. Okay. Somebody said he saw it somewhere. The economy is growing. When the economy grows, we have a lot of firms in the system who are employing people. Okay, it gets to a time that the economy contracts, like how we are experiencing now. So Ghana here, we are we not even rich recession. Yes. We are even under contraction. If we get depression, things will get worse. You can even kill your own brother for food. So <laughs> we are in a period of what contraction, a period of declining real GDP and decreasing unemployment or decreasing employment. Sorry. So Ghana, we are here. So if you go to the business cycle or the GDP cycle, Ghana, we are somewhere here. Okay, we are here. The contraction period. That is where we are. We've not even reached recession.
So a contraction of significant death and duration. Let's say if this COVID continues for like five years and price of goods and services keeps galloping or keeps going up, okay, that is where we can say that, okay, we've reached recession. But after, after five years, please are you following? Somebody kindly mute. If you're not talking, please mute yourself so that. Uh, so after five years, if we are still experiencing the same thing, still people are not getting job, people are losing their job. You can you can you can go like four or five days, you haven't eaten. You can go like one month, you haven't even received a dollar, or even one city in your hands, even do something. Then we say that yes, we are in what we call a depression. The severe one, a severe recession. So they are linked together: expansion, contraction, recession, depression. So the economy may expand, it may contract. Contract means there is a reduction in GDP. When the reduction in GDP continues, if you get what you call recession, when it gets worse, you enter into a period called a depression. Who doesn't understand these, these ones? So it is a business cycle, expansion, contraction, recession, and depression. So by- Please, also, what is Okay. What is the meaning of the expansion? Okay. The expansion was that I said, a period where the, there's an increase in the real GDP. So instead of things falling, like we experienced in 2016, no, 2017, sorry, Ghana experienced a massive growth of GDP. Okay. Ghana experienced a massive growth in GDP in 2017 when Akupari took over. Because they are feeling by number. So they, that was when they implemented free SHS, some free things, doing a whole lot, cutting sauce, building one district, one factory. So there was that kind of an increase. People, they employed, I don't know if you know NAPCO, they were employing people and all that. So anytime there's an increase in GDP, because people are getting jobs to do, because people are now feeling comfortable in the economy, we call it expansion by the situation where oh things keeps going down and name I was second name no they are oh right now we are experiencing things are going up oh I was working in this company but now they've laid me off you understand you should know we are entering what you call a contraction but when you have a lot of contraction going on people being laid off a lot of people losing their jobs people going through hell we enter what you call recession the recession continues for like five years, you enter what you call a depression. The person who asks, are you okay? So don't worry, I'll keep this video for you, okay? So that anytime you want to take a recap, okay, you can go forward. Okay. So they're asking, is there anything we can do to prevent recession? So I want to ask you right now, what do you think Ghana should do to recover its economy after experiencing so much inflation, so much errors in the economy. I'm taking suggestions from you. What do you think we should do? Yes, any idea? Um, okay, Joe Shafat. Yes, any idea? What should we do? Yes. Okay, I think um, the government should bring the fiscal policy. Okay, so fiscal policies. Okay, fiscal policy like. Yeah, so that they cut, they cut indirect taxes, and so that the um, disposable income of the individual will go high, so that they, they'll be able to purchase goods and services. But, but you know, and the government too. <laughs> okay, go on. Go on. The go government too must um, also spend more in building so that people will get jobs. Okay, but you know, the government needs money itself. Okay, the government need the money. If you say they should cut the direct taxes. The government survive on taxes. <laughs> okay, so that, that is a nice submission. Yes, anybody else? Would you yes. solicit for funds from uh, stakeholders abroad? Oh, okay, so IMF. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is why I'm going to IMF. I think that is the only solution now. Okay, that's, that's, that was a nice submission from all of you. So the government, sometimes you have to correct what you call the macroeconomic models. You need to seek for external support. It's, it's, it's good you borrow if sometimes some of you can be broke. Last semester I was so broke that I had to even borrow money from 
MTN quick loan. So sometimes for you to experience a depression, even sometimes having even in your life, haven't you experienced a depression in your life before? Where you don't have any money on you, you are so broke, then you're not a human being. Everybody experiences depression. Okay. Yes, at least once in a lifetime. So inflation and deflation. I don't know if there'll be deflation, but I haven't seen some before. I only hear of inflation. Inflation is a continuous. So look at this. It's a continuous increase. Anytime you are told to define inflation, the continuous increase in the general prices of goods and services, or you can use the word average, average level of prices. Okay. The continuous increase. And we have types of inflation, galloping, hyperinflation, and other stuff. So please, we will tackle them later in, in this same lecture, but not now. Okay. Okay. And deflation. Deflation is the opposite of what inflation when we see the price of goods and services are low for a long time. So I don't think it, it ever happens. So when the inflation rate reaches an extremely high level, the economy tends to function poor. So I, I wanted I wanted to buy something yesterday. I went to night market. Okay. I went to night market. I wanted to buy ha, huh, just one small food bill, 20 cities. When I came to Legon Campbell 107 cities, our school, small food, 20 cities. Wow. So anytime there, there is that kind of increased price to goods and services, your purchasing power tends to fall. You may not have enough money to buy goods and services. Okay. But that, that is not what the economy tends to achieve. Any good economy tends to achieve that the price of goods and services are stable, that people will be able to survive, people will be able to buy goods and services and all that. Okay. Okay, please, any, any questions so far? So we are telling us here, they're giving us some inflation rates in certain countries, but this was, I think, 2019 or so. So I believe now they've changed. They've changed. Ghana, the inflation rate is very, very high and it's very, very high everywhere. It's only in Ghana. I posted and some of you came to me DM telling me Ghana's own is hotter. I understand. I understand very well. Okay. Please, any question? No, sir. No, so, please, any, any question? We have 10 minutes. So I'll leave you. I'll give you an assignment. My assignment is that go and give me anything you know about what you call. Um, the Great Depression. Now, my next meeting with you, I'm going to cover the component of GDP. Okay, I'm going to introduce GDP to you and explain the components very well, the consumption, um, investment, what again, government, and then the external part. I'm going to explain each of them very, very well and how they are interconnected. Things that are captured in GDP, things that are not captured in calculation of GDP, and how they are interconnected. Okay, please, any question? Yes, Joseph, you raise your hand. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I want to ask what are the major to keep inflation? Measures to keep inflation? Yeah, in case <laughs> okay. of high inflation, what are the okay. major to keep inflation in order to keep it? Okay, so right now, is I think it's a general question to us. So how can we control the inflation rate in Ghana here? You see, the inflation rate in Ghana here is only caused by the government. So, Hey, the, our own people are part. Those are night markets. It doesn't increase the prices. It's not only us. Okay. So in the experience, in a situation where an economy experiences what you call inflation, government tries to what draw money back from the system or pull money out of the system. One factor that causes inflation rates is what when the government prints more money, right? So one way of doing that is to government to pull money out of the system. How? Next week, I'm, or the day I'll meet you again, I'm going to explain to what you mean by bond. So government will say, okay, I'm selling treasury bills. How many of you are into treasury bills and into investments? How many of you here? 
Do you know the interest rates? Interest rates are on more than 20% when you invest right now. So government is buying treasury bills at higher price, trying to pull money out of the system. So anytime there's an inflation rate, government will have to find ways to pull money out of the system or out of the economy. That is one way of controlling inflation. Because if there are a lot of, if you have money, okay, I'll, you buy things continuously, right? But if government comes to borrow your money, you're, you may not have a liquidity or your liquidity will be low. And you will not be able to buy more goods and services. Is any other question or any other suggestion on how I yeah. submitted? Yes. How we can curb inflation. We should yes. develop yeah. the ability of producing goods and services internally. Good. Very nice submission. So if, if you're in an economy where the people are able to produce the goods and services themselves, like university here, we have people in the economics department, we have agri science, we have consumer, you have planes, but like we are not functioning. If our institutions are working like that, we are able to get the goods and services ourselves, produce our own things, we are able to produce, even you go and buy matches, common matches, they will tell you made in China. Can you imagine? Made in China. So if we are able to produce our own things in the economy, of course, somebody may not import things and then be charging us at higher prices. However, Ghanaians are black people. Even the things we produce in Ghana here, they are expensive. You get it. So all these are factors, but it's a good point you've raised that if we're able to produce our own thing, it's a way of controlling inflation. Please, any question? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll, the video, don't worry, I'll share with you. Okay. I hope most of you are you have YouTube. Yes, iPhone, you have a question. Take me. Please, on mute. Please. And talk. please. Yeah, this also, is I suggest that okay that, um, they should increase the um like they should decrease the risk of importing things rather than exporting things. Okay, sure. Um, okay, that, that's also a good submission. So anytime you import things, but that one goes with the dollar or exchange rates. Okay, that one affects more of the exchange rates than inflation. Anytime you import goods from other countries, it makes your, your because I'm the balance of payments, I'm sure you'll be doing it. It makes you weaker or it makes your currency weaker. Okay. okay. Is there any, any question? The other person raised their hand. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Barista. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you, bro. Okay, like, to me, my suggestion is that, like, the government should rather invest in goods that regardless of anything people will buy like farming like i got you like this you see food regardless yeah. people will buy no matter what so if the government invest them more uh, inflation will be used like yeah oh. to my suggestion oh that's good so government should invest in necessity goods something like everyday people will eat right so if we have basic or necessity goods that people are not charging at higher prices i think because if you charge if you keep on increasing the price of car, me, I'm a student, I'm not going to buy a car. But when you increase the price of food, I'm a student, I'll buy food. So it returns to what affects me. That's a nice submission. So your, your mates are actually bringing in a lot of ideas. The video will be available. Okay, I have a YouTube channel. I'm going to upload the video over there and I'll share the link with you. I'll share with you. I'll, I'll name the videos in according let me say according to so that you know that this is the first lecture is the second tutorial and you can view it over there for other in case you don't understand anything i'm also on standby and the help desk you don't talk on the page okay and mind you this is a tutorial i know some of you have gone for other tutorials or you come for lectures you understand but sometimes you need a top up if you do this do this you will not have to even go and open your notes again because they are like repetition for you Okay, and I want you guys to sit down and learn very well. You know, there's, there's something called mother of all learning. It's called repetition. If you repeat what you learn, some of you are very free. Like the ladies, you don't do anything. All you do is that you just press your phones and then sleep. You don't do anything at all, apart from maybe cleaning your room. Please, it's a weekend. Make good use of it. Some of you have been giving critical thinking assignments. My boss and I, we are going to help you. We are we receive all, all the assignments. Okay. 
we receive all the assignment and we are working on it. He even called me when I was in the class with you that we should start working on it. So you are working everything for you, not only academics. I told you we have what you call an internship to when I came to your classes. I don't even, if you haven't been to your class, I will come there in the course of the week. The course of the semester or when we go on vacation, if you start working on internship, no, 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 we are done with the first session. Okay, so go and rest, go and work on my assignments, go and revise your notes, and then we meet again. I'll communicate when we have our next session. Okay, so please go and learn and make sure that you prepare. When you go for vacation, don't go and sleep. You can go and learn, learn some skills. In the vacation, I'll be training some people for, let's say, for my field that I've been doing, graphic design and blogging. I'll be training some of the con students over there. You can join. Or if you want to do internship too, I'll help you secure an internship letter. And then I'll guide you or direct you where to submit. So let's work together, OK, and prepare yourself. It's not only academics that you are here. You are here to build yourself very well for the future work. So I'll end the meeting and then I'll make sure I record. I'll give you the recorded video. OK, if you have any personal question, you all have my number. That's why you are all here. My number is everywhere. Reach out to me and let's talk. OK, so have a nice weekend. OK, I'll see you later. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Can you send a, a recording to the group so that we know what? Yes, please. I will do that. Thank you. And there's lives to you. I'll do that.